Good morning, everybody. It is good to see so many that are already joined us. I hope that you're doing well this Wednesday morning. Uh, a reminder that it's Wednesday. Sometimes in all of this, it's hard to keep track of what day that it is. Uh, but I hope that you're doing well. As always, I hope that you'll leave a comment in the comment section. Let us know how we can pray for you. Let us know how we can help you. Um, I see several that have already wished us all a good morning. Audrey here asks for uh, prayers because of the the weather and for anxiety. It's a lot to uh, to think about with all of the things going on already. Uh, and on top of that, potential for bad weather. So we for sure will be praying for you, Audrey, and for uh, your peace of mind during all of this. And again, Steve Redden asked for the same same things. So we will definitely be praying for everyone to stay safe and to be well uh, during this time of a lockdown and coronavirus, as well as bad weather that has the potential to affect affect a lot of lives. So again, we'll be praying for for that. Uh, again, if there's anything for which we can pray for you specifically, please put that in the comment section. Or if there's anything with which you need help, if you need supplies, or if there's anything we can do for you, please uh, please take a second and, and share that with us. Even if you're not in the Plano area, if you're anywhere in the world, I'm sure that your brothers and sisters in Christ would love to help you. We like to spend just a few minutes in the morning, uh, not only talking about the things that are on our heart and praying for each other, but also going through a, a bit of text, a bit of scripture. We've been looking at the Sermon on the Mount, and we stopped yesterday in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 32, and we will pick up with verse 33 this morning. Jesus says, again, you've heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. But I say to you, do not take an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it, it, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not take an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let what you say be simply yes or no. Anything more than this comes from evil. So again, as we've been talking about each day in the Sermon on the Mount, I think you have to look at two things. One is the admonishment that uh, that Jesus is giving to the people like the Pharisees and how he is admonishing them for the way that they have uh, not lived out a kingdom standard, not lived according to the covenant that God has made with his people, not lived as God had called them to live as salt and light in the world. So he's admonishing the people of Israel, especially the people like the Pharisees and the scribes, but he's also instructing his people and instructing his disciples that if you are going to be citizens of the kingdom of God, if the kingdom of God is going to belong to you, if you are going to live and receive the kingdom, then this is how you live. So on the one hand, he admonishes them for, for saying, yes, if you swear something to the Lord, then you have to do what you've sworn. But they would create sort of loopholes in their oaths where they would say, well, I never mentioned the Lord, so I, I kind of get a pass and it's not binding on me. So I don't really have to do what I swore I would do because I never mentioned the Lord because I just swore by heaven. I didn't specifically mention the Lord or I swore by the earth. I didn't mention the Lord or I swore by my head, but I didn't mention the Lord or I swore by Jerusalem, but I didn't mention the Lord. And so there were all of these debates about what sort of oaths were binding and what sort of oaths were not binding. I kind of think about it like when we were kids, uh, maybe we crossed our fingers when we said something and we said, oh, I don't have to do it because I had my fingers crossed or I wasn't telling the truth, but I had my fingers crossed so I get a pass. And that sort of uh, trickery, that sort of deception, that sort of misleading people or not, at the very least, not following through on what they had promised to do uh, based on sort of some sort of loophole system was not in keeping with God's covenant with them. And then there's also the instruction for us as those who would be followers of Jesus, those who would live and receive, live in and receive the kingdom of God. We must be people that don't do this sort of thing. We must be people that tell the truth, that do what we say we're going to do, that we follow through on our commitments. Why? Because the Lord is in everything. 
He is in the earth. He is in heaven. He is in Jerusalem. He is in our head. We have no control over our life. So to say that I swear by my head, but that has nothing to do with the Lord, is to not understand that the Lord has to do with everything. And what you say and what you do and whether or not you follow through on your commitments is a reflection of your relationship with the Lord and how you think of the Lord. It, it, it's a reflection on, on who you are as God's people. So in the kingdom of God, the kingdom people must be people who tell the truth, who do what they say they're going to do. And man, that applies to so many, so many areas. Um, you know, and I was trying to think this morning, in fact, I accidentally hit the go live button before I was really ready because I was trying to think, how does this specifically apply to our situation right now? Because I, I, I want to make application in all of these things to what we're going through right now. You know, and it, it occurs to me that this situation that we're in right now has really revealed the fact that we are so busy, aren't we? We just have this tendency to go, 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 go. I don't know about you, but I still feel busy. I still feel overwhelmed. Like I've got too much to do and not enough hours in the day. And then I think, but wait, before the lockdown, I also had little league practices and little league games. And we had after, you know, we had church activities and LTC and you know, we had all of these things going on. How did I have time for all of that when I still feel like without those things, I'm still overwhelmed. We just have this tendency to pack our lives so full of commitments. And we have this tendency to pack in so much stuff that we can't possibly do everything or do everything well. And it's this reminder, I think, that as God's people, we need to be very careful that we don't overcommit ourselves. That when we say, I'm going to do that, I'm going to give a yes to that that we recognize that every time we give a yes to something, we're giving a no to something else. Every time I say, I will do this for you, I will commit this one hour to you, then I'm also saying I'm not going to commit that one hour to anyone else. Every yes to something is a no to something else. And I need to make sure that I'm not giving a no to something I already gave a yes to. And if I overcommit myself and I overextend myself, I'll eventually find myself giving a yes to you and, and accidentally giving a no to someone else that I gave a yes to earlier. And so I, this, this time in our life might be a great opportunity to stop and think, how can I reduce the, the number of commitments that I'm making so that I make sure that I only commit to the things I can actually follow through on and that I follow through on all the things to which I commit. And as God's people, we, we have to recognize that our commitments are a reflection of our relationship with God. Our commitments are a reflection of how we, we think of each other. If I commit to you and I give you a yes, then that's a big deal. If I say, no, I can't do that, then that's also a big deal. And so we need to be very careful that we're that we're trustworthy. And I think that's the very heart of what Jesus is saying, that Jesus is saying, if you say you're going to do something, then do it. People ought to be able to trust you. You shouldn't have to swear. You shouldn't have to say, you know, yeah, I'll do that. And I said, well, will you really? And you say, yes, I swear by my head, I'll do that. If I don't do that, you can take my head. Well, you shouldn't have to do that because you should be so trustworthy and people should be able to know that if you're one of God's people, then you will do what you say you'll do. So I think that in order to fulfill that, in order to do what we say we've got, we're going to do, then we need to make sure that we're not overcommitting ourselves so that when we say yes to something or when we say no to something, we really mean it. And not only do we really mean it, but other people know that we really mean it. They know that we will follow through on what we say we're going to do. So I hope that maybe uh, Jesus' words here give us something to think about as we go throughout our day. I did want to mention a prayer request I saw that came in. Uh, Eric Garcia uh, from Nicar Nicaragua uh, asked that we pray for, for the families in Nicaragua, and we, we certainly will, brother. Um, I know that um, this pandemic has hit 
every country, every every people throughout the world, uh, but some places it's hit even harder. And, and we certainly will remember our brothers and sisters in Nicaragua and the community there as well, as well as all the people throughout the world. So let's spend a few minutes with God in prayer as we start our day. Father, we are We're so incredibly thankful for this day, and Father, I'm sure that today will present us with many opportunities. Some opportunities we can say yes to, and other opportunities we probably need to say no to. Father, help us to have wisdom and discernment to know which opportunities to say yes to and which ones uh, to, to turn down. Father, help us to not overcommit ourselves, but to do everything to which we've committed. Help us, Father, to be trustworthy to simply let our yes be yes and our no be no. Father, help us during this time to re-examine our priorities and re-examine our commitments and re-examine whether or not we are being people that others can trust. Father, I know that there are so many in our, in our country and in our world that need help. And Father, we pray for our brothers and sisters in Nicaragua, for our brothers and sisters in Estonia, for our brothers and sisters in Haiti. We pray, Father, for those in South Texas and in Mexico. Those are the the mission points that we support at McDermott Road. But we know, Father, beyond these places, all throughout the world, there are people that are struggling, that don't have enough food to eat or supplies to take care of them during this shutdown and lockdown. And Father, we pray that you you bless them and help them, give them, give them food to eat, give them healing for their body, give them comfort and strength for their heart and spirit. Father, help the church to be a light in these communities. I pray, Father, for Brother Eric and for the work that he's doing in Nicaragua and pray that you richly bless him and for the work that goes on there. Father, we pray for uh, those in the path of storms today. We pray that you keep us safe and that you give peace to our hearts and help us not to worry, but to trust in you. Father, we are so thankful that we have this avenue of prayer through which we can bring all of our anxiety and all of our thoughts and we can lay them at your feet and we can trust you with our past, with our present, and with our future. Father, we thank you for that privilege and we thank you, Father, for Jesus who makes that possible and it's in his name we pray. Amen. I love you all. I appreciate you being here so much. I hope you have a great day. God bless. Bye-bye.